Hello lovelies, welcome to Alaka Gay YouTube channel. Today I'm going to how to make this curl neckline dress. If you're interested in how to make this, you can see what this So to video. start off the pattern drafting, I'm going to measure, input my vertical measurement and I'll first input my shoulder to my nipple which is 11, then the shoulder to the waist which is 16, and the shoulder to the hip which is 14 inches. So I'm just going to square down the line like so. So I will just label that as the bust point, the shoulder to nipple, then this is the waistline, and this line will be the hip line. So the next thing I'll do is to input the shoulder measurements. My shoulder is 14, and again to divide your shoulder measurement by four, 2, which is, that's why I marked 7, and I'll come down by 1.5 inch which is the shoulder slope for the front. And from there, I will input my arm hole measurement. Your arm hole measurement is calculated by your boss divided by 6 plus 1.5. Mine is 7.1, that's why I marked that. I'm just going to square down that line. And that line, I'm going to write here, that's the chest line. And the next measurement I input is the chest measurement right there on the chest line, the shoulder measurement rather, on the chest line. Then I'll connect it together to where I mark the shoulder slope. So the next thing I'll do is to mark the neckline. So I'll be using three by four inches. So depending on how deep you want your neck to be, I would recommend between three to five inches for your neckline. So, and from there, I'm going to mark from the neck to the shoulder slope like so. And the next measurement I'll input is my bust measurement divided by 4. My bust is 34, so divided by 4 equals 8.5. Then I added 1 inch for ease and also 1 inch for sewing allowance. Because the dress is not up zip, that's why we need ease allowance. And on the waist too, I input cut out my waist measurement plus 1 inch for ease and also 1 inch for sewing allowance. And then on, on the hip too, I'll input cutter of my hip measurement plus one inch for ease and also one inch for sewing allowance. So now I'll use my cover to connect the lines together like so. Then on the M line, whatever I have on my hip, whatever I have on my hip, then I'm going to measure it on my hem line. And I'm just going to input it right there. I didn't measure the paper because the paper is exact my gown length. So that's why I didn't bother to even measure that. So then I want the gown to have a bit of curve at the side. So from the M line there, I'll measure 2 inches up. And I'll use my curve ruler to connect it to the center. So as to give it a curve kind of effect. If you, if you want just to have this curve kind of effect at this side, you can just do this too. And the next thing I will do is to create the ham or curve. So the line that I have there, I'll measure whatever I have there and divide it into two. So that is where I'm going to mark. And from where I mark in, I will come in by 0 0.75. So before I mark the, so I'm coming in from where I mark the center, I'll come in by 0 0.75. And from there, I'll create my curve. My arm will curve so from just connect it just like the way I'm doing right now, just connect it to your arm all like so. So I'm just and then I'll connect it together to the side, and that's it for the front pattern. So I'm just cutting off the excess paper I have there. So I will use this back pattern, the front pattern to create the back pattern. So the next thing I'll do is just to place my front pattern on another fresh pattern paper and make sure they are they align. Make sure they are touching so that you know have excess around. So make sure they are just aligning from the center to the side. Then just trace. After you make sure they have aligned, just trace out from the chest line. That's where you're going to start. Just mark your chest line around there and trace round your pattern like so just trace round like that so the next thing is to square down the line of the chest line so i'm just going to square down that line and just liberate the chest line 
So now, to create the neckline for the back, input your half of your shoulder measurements and for the shoulder slope for the back is just 1 inch. So for the neckline, you know I did 3 by 4 and at the back I'll be doing 3 by 1 because I want the back to be high. You can do whatever neckline you want but the back eye is advisable. Then I'll mark, I'll just connect my shoulder slope to the neckline like that. So on the chest line to our mark half of the shoulder measurements, then connect those lines together to the shoulder slope. And on that line there, the line that I just marked, I'll divide whatever I have there by 2. So as to get the midpoint there to create the armor curve. So I'm just going to, I'm just checking if things are accurate there. So I'm just going to, and from there I'll mark in 0.5. So the 0 0.5, I'm just going to use that to create the ham or curve. So I just connect the curve. The reason why I didn't use what I used for the front for the back is just for accuracy because the front arm or curve is deeper than the back. Then back to the front pattern. You know, for to create the because they're using the slash and spread method, we need to create the lines where we are doing our slash and spread. So from the chest line. I'm coming up, I come up by 2 inches. So I'll be slashing on 3 lines. On the boss point, the chest line, and also the new line that I just marked now. So I'm just slashing it open. Then I'll slash open on the chest line. And also on the line that I just created just now, I come up by 2 inches from the chest line. So this is where I'm going to spread my pattern. So now fold your fabric into 2. And make sure you have so from the edge of your fabric mark five inches this will serve as your facing for the front we are be working with the front pattern now so just mark five inches that will serve as your front facing so mark your five inches like so mark it then the next thing you do is to place your pattern paper on on it so make sure your pattern paper starts from where the 5 inches stop. So just place your pattern paper, make sure it just stands firm. You know, it's just going to bend because you are slash and spreading. So just do exactly the way I'm doing right now. Just spread it out. Just spread it out as much as you want your neckline to just fall, your curl neckline to fall. So Make sure you pin it down, pin down your pattern paper so that it will not move about and you don't have such stage or excess fabric. So just pin it in place and you just, just pin it in place. Then you spread it, just spread, just spread it very well. And make sure maybe you're spreading, if the pattern paper is not spread enough you can cut you a bit and just spread make sure it doesn't go beyond the five inches neckline that you marked is five inches for the first thing rather that you marked so i'm still spreading now Please, this you it requires a lot of patience because it might be moving around, so you need to pin it very well. It's not it's not something that you can just do. So I'm still slashing open my pattern paper so as to keep it in place to have the falling that is looking good. So from the edge there, make sure that I don't spread more than around 12 to 14 inches between. 12 to 14 inches is okay so from there you mark your 12 inches just mark it just mark it like i'm doing right now i've marked right there so paint the rest of the pattern paper in place too so that they will not move when you need to cut please pin it down pin down the pattern paper so from where you mark there just Open it like just mark it down. Don't mark it straight. Let it just go out a bit. I'm sorry the camera was not capturing it, but just mark it out so that it's not straight and use your chalk to trace out round. This is just for accuracy. 
please. It takes a lot of patience to do this just to get accuracy. So where I mentioned, so the next thing is just to cut out. Just cut it out. I'm just cutting out my fabric. So I want us to see it very well. Let's zoom to camera. So I'm just cutting it. So I leave some like half inch for sewing allowance around there. So I'm just cutting through like so. So where the first seed and the shoulder meet, please make sure to notch that area. It is very very important so that when you're sewing, when you want to sew it, it's very easy for you to identify that this is where the shoulder stops and the ham holds that. I'm just removing my pins like so. So now just place the back pattern on the fabric and cut it out. You know, the back is just as simple like that. So for the sleeve, I just use my basic short sleeve pattern to cut it out. So I have a tutorial on that. The link will be in the comment section below. So to sew this, I've already joined the facing to the back, which I just cut out the facing for the back and joined it to the back neck like so. So now the last thing is to place the front on the back. Make sure the facing, you know, we notch where the facing stop and the shoulder starts. So just place it on each other like that. The facing facing each other and then shoulder facing each other. Then just fold it into two like so and you're going to run a stitch. So I'm just going to show us all over again. So you should just please just watch this again now this is the back this is the facing that i joined to it just got your facing and joined it to the back so the front you notice know, is the facing for the front place it on the facing of the back there's a notch there so make sure the shoulder for the front and back they are on top of each other then you just fold it into two just from where the facing starts just place them on each other and go and run a stitch you can use your paint to pin it in place so just take it to the same machine and run a stitch and you do the same thing for the second shoulder too just place them on each other the back facing facing the front facing and the back shoulder facing the front shoulder just fold them into two and take it to your same machine and run a stitch like so so here i've already joined it together the shoulder i'm just going to turn it to the right side like so so i just turned it and this is how it looks so can you see the cold neckline falling the cold neckline there is just draping like that so the next thing is to join this fabric together by the side using one inch swim allowance that we added to it just go and join it together like so and at the hemline too just go and aim it with this sewing allowance that i have there i'm just going to go and do that so i've already joined it together at the, sh at the side and also at the hemline too so the next thing is to join the and at the shoulder too i just to sew down the facing around the shoulder area to keep it in place so the next thing is for me to join my sleeve to the body i've joined my sleeve together and also aim it at the end line so just put it together around the arm area and join it so i'm just going to go and do that and show us so this is how it looks now i've already fixed the sleeve right there so this is how it's looking so for the at the back the back facing it's just there so i'm just use the hemi gum to gum it down and that's the finish work of this dress so this is how it's looking now thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel for more awesome content i'll catch you in my next tutorial bye